Hello everyone, it's Q&A Wednesday and my gosh, you guys are rocking it so hard with all the questions you asked this week. Um, a lot of them. I had to really think hard about them. So um, let's get right to it. So I'm going to just tell you briefly like the questions that we're going to be that are, I'm going to cover and then I'll go through each one. So first I'll go over... Um, I'm looking at my computer here, so that's what I'm doing here. I, I'll go over some part of the Solia Pur, um, Buleria class, and then um, I'll go over, let's see, oopsies, where is it? Um, question about uh, ethics of using choreography, and then um, dancing to music that's uh, more like Gypsy King style, and then the differences between Solea por bulería, bulería por fiesta, solea, etc., etc. And then uh, flamenco dresses, and then fans, and then a structure of bulería. Holy moly! Let's get to it! <laughs> All right, so Eileen was asking um, about to the in the solea por bulería class, uh, there's the last compás of the llamada, and then on the, the the remate or the break of the of the letra, okay. So and I already wrote out the answer, but it just like reading it, it's like wait, what is that? So I wanted just to review that. So the the sound of the um, of the llamada was um, uh, triaca triaca tria ta 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 no wait triaca triaca ta 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 ka 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 that one okay so triaca triaca tria ta ka ta pa 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 okay now that pa 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 is just kind of like eight and then kind of the ten. <laughs> So you, that one is it's syncopated, so I can't count it. So triaca, triaca, tria, da ka ta. That part is six. Da ka ta, ba ka ka ka, ka 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 ka, ka 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 ka. So it's like eight, a little bit on the um, nine. It ka 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 ka, ka 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 ka. So you don't count it. So it's like. Eight, a little bit before the nine, a little bit after the nine, and then ten. So triaka, triaka, tria, ta ka ta, ta ka ka ka. Ole. All right. So that was for the opening llamada, and then for the 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 remate. So da 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 Taka ta taka ka ta pa. So taka ta taka ka ta pa. So that would be in the contra after the four. So one two three pa. So one two three four and taka ta taka ka ta pa pa ka ka taka ka ta. So taka ta taka ka ta 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 ka. So taka ka. So it's and seven. And seven, hold eight, nine and a ten. Taka taka ta. So taka ta taka ka ta taka 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 ka ta. So for me, like when it starts getting all that contra and syncopated stuff, I can't count it all out because my brain just just, just, just goes like that. So I count as much as I can. So one two three pa pa ka ka. One two three pa ka ta ka. So it's just practice, practice, practice to internalize that compas and being able to maybe just watch it, play palmas with it and count as much as you can. Maybe not necessarily counting the actual steps, but counting the compas so you can see where those steps are in the compas. So I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's move on. So the next question is from Rada. Okay, she. This is a long question, but let's. I'll break it down a little bit. So she says, "I wanted to ask you a question regarding the ethic or choreography use. I know that usually professional dancers make their own choreography. Is it inappropriate to use someone else's, someone's dance, the way it appears on YouTube, for example, or if I go to a workshop and learn a dance? There, is it okay to perform it? Yes, it is. Because okay, for one thing, if someone teaches you a choreography, obviously that means that you're going to use it, right? Because if you don't use it, then what's the point of learning it? Um, but you know, you just always um, 
reference or acknowledge who you learned that from. You know, you don't say like, oh, I'm doing this choreography and it's from blah, 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 blah. No, and especially if it's a, a live music situation, you'll have your choreography, but there's always gonna be things that, that change, right? So professional dancers make up their own choreography. However, they're always getting inspiration from someone else. Like when I make my choreographies, I have, sometimes I will like look through YouTube and I see stuff that inspires me. So maybe it'll be half a compas of soniquete, of a sound that I like, and I'll incorporate that. Or it might be half a compas with some move, but, and I'll do, you know, copy that move and add it in. So it's, it's mine, but it's inspired from someone else. So if you learn someone else's choreography, it's totally fine to, um, to dance it, to perform it. I mean, that's the, that, that's totally fine. Um, okay, so, uh, and you want to learn to create your own dances. The question is, how do you choose the movements? How does the dancer find her own movement vocabulary? Learning from one teacher makes students get used to a particular choreography. Having a few good teachers at the same time is a dilemma for those who live outside of Spain. So how to approach this issue? Okay, so when I was beginning, <clears throat> you know, you, you're not gonna, don't think of it as that you're gonna learn, you're gonna occur, choreograph a bunch of dances because that's overwhelming. You just pick one palo that you like and that you have access to to learn it and to perform it and to maybe work with live music if you can. Um, the way I did it was I had learned a solea purbuleria in class for my teacher Yalisa but then I totally reworked it, but I, I understood the structure. So that's like the most important thing. You learn, understand the structure of the letra and you understand the structure of the whole dance. So meaning that, you know, you have your opening llamada, you have your letra, you have an escobilla, you have a buliria, stuff like that, like the whole, the, the, the flow of the dance. Um, so I would recommend that, you know, what do you like? Do you, is it like a beginner? When you're st first starting out with choreographing, it's best to learn to use a palo, a rhythm that is very um, simple. So don't maybe, don't choose seguiria because um, there's too many variations. Maybe do solea purbuleria is really good. Guajira is really good. Um, alegrias, although alegrias is a little bit more advanced just because there's a little bit more components um, and slightly, slight variations in the, in the letra. Um, so, and if you are fi finding your own movement vocabulary, let's see, I would say it just happens, right? <laughs> you just keep dancing. Just like if you, if you create a choreography, you'll have, you'll, you'll do what your teachers teach you, right? But eventually you will um, uh, absorb that and it might come out a different way. So, um, even if you are teaching from learning from different teachers here outside of or outside of Spain or in Spain, it's still going to be a problem because you're going to get all these influences, and um, you'll dance a certain way in their particular classes. However, how you you merge that it depends on what palo you're dancing and what feels right. So you can potentially create a whole choreography using um, material from three different teachers and you might use their stylings but somehow uh, you will make it your own just through repetition 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 so I uh, so to conclude that yes it's totally okay to use someone else's choreography um, as long as you're not saying, I made it up, <laughs> it's totally fine. And then to create your own choreography, you need to understand, just pick a palo that calls to you and, and uh, learn the structure of the letra and then just understand the whole component, the flow of, a, of an entire dance. And then, um, and you just do it and it's never going to be perfect, right? There's always going to be changes that you will always, 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 always make. So I hope that helps. Okay. Now, Rebecca asks... Um, can we can we learn to dance with music that is more familiar to non-flamenco enthusiasts? I mean, some music that can be heard anytime, like music by the Gypsy Kings. Uh, her mother requested her that she dance to Bambaleo. <laughs> okay, so the Gypsy Kings, that particular style of music is called rumba. So it's not, it's rumba. It's not like Argentinian 
uh, not, not, I mean, it's not um, like ballroom or it's not Cuban. It's like flamenco rumba is just party music. So it's a fast four count. And and you can totally dance to Gypsy Kings. And for inspiration, just do a search on flamenco rumba, R-U-M-B-A on YouTube, and you'll see. And it's basically that kind of music is just shaking your butt. That's all there is to it. You just shake your butt and it's kind of like salsa dancing. Just It's very playful, very relaxed. There's no structure whatsoever. It's just good time dancing music. So um, that's totally fine. Um, and once you, if you know the song like Bamboleo, then you know you'll like do some sort of action or cut or stop move because you already know the music. So you can um, be playful with it. So just do a little search on YouTube and you'll see like all kinds of uh, examples. But flamenco rumba and um, or, or rumba flamenca. Um, so that would be uh, totally doable. All right. And uh, next question is from Kathy. Okay, this is a good one. Trying, she's trying to understand the differences between solea por bulería, bulería por fiesta, solea, and bulería. Okay, is it the speed, palo, particular dance step, something else? She finds it con confusing to understand what is what when listening to the music or watching. I believe the challenge is that they are all 12 count palos. A dancer can start in one and finish in another. True. Okay. So each one on its own is a an individual rhythm. And the way it's identifiable is through the chords or the melody. And I have some examples here. All right. So... So solea, for example. Let's see. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So the count you'll hear. It's very slow count, but you'll recognize it as solea from the chords. Dun dun dun, da 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 da. Here, this part. That's very solea. So you'll hear the chords. So for example, so so whatever like popular music that you love, if you heard that song, uh, just say it is Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Not my favorite, but that's what comes to mind. If you heard any chords from that song, you would identify it immediately. If some other cover band did it, you would identify it immediately. So it's the same thing, and, and you and you go, if someone asks you, well, how do you know? Well, it's like, I know it, because I hear it, I know it. So it's the same thing with solea, solea por buleria, uh, all those others, or it, all the rhythms, that you would recognize it just by the, the sound, the melody, the chord. And since I'm not a musician, I can't tell you exactly, like, major, minor, anything like that, but, um, but you hear it and you recognize it. So again, for Solea, okay, so that's Solea. Solea por buleria means that whenever you have something por something else, it would mean the first kind of letra and more of the second kind of rhythm. So solea, por buleria, would be a solea style letra more in the in the upbeat mode of buleria, which is faster. So this one... Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So it's also the chords, the melody, the tempo. Okay. 
so it has that same sound um, or, or it has that, that tone. Okay, now bulerías. Let's see. Ooh, what was that? Okay, bulerías, let's see, has this. So it's faster. Slightly different palmas. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is the opening falsetta for um, Bulleria, but this part right here. Okay. That was the sound too. Bum bum bum. That sound, that that melody, that chord, that's all very Bulleria. So um, I will link these examples to the Facebook page so you can hear them. But also, if you go into the um, in the studio, I have lectures for all three: Bulleria, Solea por Bulleria, and wait, what did I say? Solea, Solea por Bulleria, and Bulleria. I have examples in the lectures in the studio, so watch them and you'll just hear it: repetition, repetition, repetition. Okay, that's such a good question. And it's confusing. And believe me, it's confusing. And it just takes repetition, <laughs> repetition, repetition. All right. So the next question is from Steffi. I live in China and good quality flamenco dresses are not easy to find. I want to go to a tailor with my own fabric and some photos. And what kind of fabric is mostly used and comfortable for dresses? Okay. So in Spain, the majority of dresses are made out of a fabric called Koshivo. K-O-S-H-I-V-O, -O. and all the fabric comes from China, so you'll find, you'll have no problem finding the fabric there, but the majority is for, is made koshivo, and what you want to find, you, know, you can pick any fabric, really, but you want something that's going to be durable, that's not going to be wrinkly, and uh, not really shiny, so koshivo is more like a, what is it, like a, a polyester crepe, but has some nice fluidity to it and it's durable. That's the thing, it's durable. Another one that used to be kind of popular was called peach skin, um, which is like industrial steel. It looks beautiful and it's really easy to sew, but it gets very hot and very warm. Um, but there's all kinds of variations on that. So Koshivo would be your best bet. bet. Um, some places, or some people um, use Lycra as well, like a heavy Lycra. And I actually have a few dresses made out of Lycra, uh, but not light Lycra, it's like heavy, heavy. It's like putting on Spanx, putting on this Lycra, it's awesome. So um, those are the majority ones, Koshivo. And, or a crepe, but nothing that wrinkles, something not cotton, for sure not cotton, 100% cotton, because it, the more you wash it, it'll fade and it wrinkles. So I can't wait to see that, that's good. Um, all right, Rose asks, advance, advice on fans. Can you recommend a vendor for uh, an, ab an abanico? One place online that had plastic or wood as well as small or large. Okay, so the types of fans uh, that you want all depends on your um your mood what you want to do so lots of times i hear some examples here so this one is an awesome fan i never use it because it's so pretty and i don't want to mess it up but it's two it's um wood wood um what would you call this base fabric two-sided fabric so it's really durable um and it's great and this is would be a large fan um Oh my gosh. So it's a large fan. And um, the thing that's going to, that uh, depends, that's going to mess up, all fans mess up <laughs> at some point, is because these clasps are so lame. They are lame. So they always, always, always break. All right. So, but this is an expensive fan. Like it'll run like maybe $50. Um, and then this one is the same kind of fan, but it's only one sided. So you see the spines on one side. And so it's just one thing of fabric, okay? And so it's also but wood, but this little clasp, my friend had it fixed, so she got her husband to do some sort of magic thing with um, with a solder, to, so she melted plastic on here, so it, it's durable. But um, those clasps are always gonna break. Now a smaller fan is so cute. So these, this one I think is, yeah, it's also, plastic no it's also wood with a little tiny bit of fabric but I also have ones that have wood down here and more fabric but the small fans are really fun to play with um, so it all depends on what you want to do the big fans you can do more turning things 
um, but the small ones are just cute. So it all depends on what you want and how much you want to spend. But just know that you will always be disappointed because these clasps will always break. And um, if you're in Spain, buy yourself a lot of fans because it's the, what kills you is the shipping. <laughs> because like maybe it's like a $10 fan, but to ship it from Spain, it's going to cost $20. So you have to buy a lot of stuff. So um, yes. And then if you buy them, you know, if, I'm in the United States. So if you buy them from the, in the United States, you'll pay more, you'll pay less for shipping, but more for the fan. But I'll also link in the... Um, over here on resources on where you can find fans. But um, yes, if you're in Spain or if you know someone's going to Spain, have them buy you a lot. All right, then the last question is, what is the basic structure of a Bulerias Letra? <sighs> that one's a trick question because there's many structures. There's many different kinds of Bulerias. Bulerias, what well, it's all Bulerias por fiesta, I'm assuming. Bulerias por fiesta, as opposed to bulerias at the end of a um, of a solo, like at the end of solea or solea por buleria, you you switch to to um, buleria, um, or even alegrias, you switch to bulerias de Cadiz, right? So I'm assuming that this is for por fiesta. Okay, first off, it all depends on uh, where you are. Are you in the states? Are you in Spain? Is your singer uh, Cante puro, like fl flamenco from Spain, or is it someone, an American learning um, flamenco? So um, that all depends. But uh, the general structure that's very popular, that's bien cuadrado, very squared, very well placed, is na 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 da da da. Break, 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 break. Na 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 da 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 da. Na da da. So that would be like first line, break, repeat the first line. Resolve here and then displante. <laughs> All right, so that's my my uh, <laughs> chicken scratch singing. But here is an example. Let me see. I have it right here. <sighs> Okay, this is gonna be the just like the style that I just told you. So. But break, mark, uh, and then, then the um, splante. So, but my recommendation is, is that you always have, like if it's for Bulerias por Fiesta, that you have, like, just set, set moves. Don't, don't have any grandeur to, like, go crazy with stuff. Just have your, like, a couple of markings, like just that front marking, transition into a Buleria step, and then some sort of desplante, some sort of bam, bam, ba. And even that doesn't have to be complicated as long as it's strong, con aire, and you're, like, with, with conviction. Um, but what you would do is like just put on a piece of music and dance. For example, this one. So, okay, so this one is nice Bulerias de Jerez, bien tradicional, very traditional. Um, and some of it you can dance to. I mean, you could basically dance to all of it, but it's not going to fall a, a particular formula. So you have to listen to the peaks and the valleys of the of the singing. So you have to resolve. But also, like this is, um, you know, a recording. You can only do so much, right? Of of following at, or predicting what's going to happen because in a live situation, the singer is watching you. So if you start doing something crazy, the singer is going to follow. Or maybe the singer starts doing something crazy and you follow. So um, 
it, the best thing to do is just to train your ear to mark and see where you can um, resolve somehow. And when I mean resolve, just to uh, transition and, you know, nine ten. So, for example, this one. Let's see. Uh... try to resolve. <laughs> the main thing would be staying in compass. Let's go to a next next move on here. So this one keeps going. Transition. even more well you can watch me all day just going rrr, rrr, rrr. but that's um, the idea is that you listen and and you just try to keep up with the palmas you try to keep up with marking and you try to to resolve with the singer like you can hear when the singer ends and you try to end with the singer but you know it's a process you just keep going as much as you can and you um, practice 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 or at least you know if you don't practice all the time at least you're open to to the learning process right um, let me see any other questions here that's it my gosh this was a long one um, yes that was it <laughs> so I don't have any other questions so thank you so much and I'll put all the um, the notes that I had for you I'll put them up with the recording so Bye, thank you for sticking out with me.